welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lorraine Rose, and if you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. It means so much. <laughs> Every year for two weeks in the fall, my husband and I and a group of our friends from church all go camping. Now the campsite that we go to has electricity hookups, and there are also no bears. We've never seen any bears. There are no bears around us or near us, and those are all things you have to consider when you see the food that I'm prepping and when I talk about where I'm gonna house the food on the campground. We actually bring a cooler that we can just leave our food in. We leave that out overnight, and no critters have ever tried to get in it. And we also bring a mini fridge because <laughs> food is able to be preserved so much better as we all know in a fridge and we purchased a fridge for $50 on Facebook marketplace so if your campsite setup is like ours and your campground is like ours I would highly recommend for you to get a mini fridge it really is a game changer it preserves things like butter half and half sour cream so much better than a cooler does <laughs> and our mini fridge has a freezer so if you can find one that has a freezer like a separate freezer and a fridge that's even better that way you can house a lot of your meat in the freezer and you don't have to worry about it going bad so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a menu and then once you've created your menu, you're gonna to wanna to do all of your grocery shopping. And you're gonna to wanna to do that on a separate day from all of your meal prep, just so that way you're not totally overwhelmed and stressed out and tired and exhausted right before your camping trip. <laughs> so the first three days of this week, I spent deep cleaning our home. I spent doing all the laundry. That way that was out of the way. I deep cleaned our fridge and our freezer and our pantry. And then the fourth day I did all of my grocery shopping and now we have about four days before we go camping, which is more than enough time for me to get all of my meal prep done. Hopefully I'll be able to get a ton done today and then a ton done tomorrow as well. So this is gonna be a two day video, but hopefully it will help you and give you some great meal ideas and show you how to prep your food for a camping trip. And that's something that I would highly recommend. As much prep work as you can do ahead of time that you don't have to do at the campground, the more relaxing and enjoyable your camp trip will be. You don't wanna to have to spend your whole camping trip cooking. <laughs> so I try to do as much prep work as I can here. Now I enjoy cooking at the campground. It's something that's kind of fun and relaxing for me. So I don't just cook everything at home to where I just have to heat it up there, but I do it a lot of work to kind of make cooking enjoyable while I'm at the campground, if that makes sense. So we have got 12 breakfasts that we're prepping, 12 lunches, and 12 dinners. I believe 12 dinners, is that what my computer says? Yes, 12 dinners. <laughs> now we're not prepping all of those dinners because some of those dinners we have planned to eat out. There's a barbecue restaurant by our campground that we love to go to, and then my husband and some of the guys love to go fishing and so we'll always do like a fish fry so I don't have to really prep for that <laughs> but the first thing we're gonna start with is breakfast so without further ado let's just get right into the video all right so for the first six breakfasts we are doing breakfast bowls, so I need six pounds of meat. Now, one thing I'm gonna do as I meal prep is start a pile on my kitchen counters for my pantry items, my dried good items that I can just keep in my pantry. I bring a Cabela's Deluxe Camping Kitchen with me and it has two canvas bags where I house all of my dried food products because like I said, there are no bears at our campground so we're able to do that and we have no problems with critters at all. 
So the next thing that I've purchased for our breakfast burrito bowls is two jars of salsa verde. So I'm gonna just put this in the pile. I'm gonna start the pantry pile. I'll put that there now. All right, so with the breakfast burrito bowls, we are going to fry eggs. I'm not gonna have any eggs in my burrito bowl just because I know I won't have room for eggs. I'll be way too full. I'm probably gonna just sprinkle some hemp seeds on top of my burrito bowl for protein. But for the guys, my husband's gonna be doing two eggs a day with his breakfast, and then Ryan said he wanted five eggs a day with his breakfast. <laughs> so I'm gonna just go ahead and put how many eggs is that? 42. 42 eggs in this basket for our breakfast. And I'll just add the eggs to this basket that we'll need for all of the other meals that I'm making. And I can leave these eggs out. I don't have to refrigerate these because these are from our chickens. We have 11 chickens and farm fresh eggs like that that come from our chickens can actually stay out on the counter for up to a year. So. If you are going camping to save on a cooler or fridge space, I would highly recommend trying to find somebody who has chickens and buy those eggs from them. So I'm gonna put the eggs in the basket now. All right, you guys, so remember the ground beef that I showed you that we're gonna be using for the breakfast burrito bowls? That is just ground beef. And so to make the ground beef taste like breakfast sausage, I made this seasoning. Now all this seasoning is, it's, an, it's gonna be enough for six pounds of ground beef. So if you wanna recreate this, all you will need is six teaspoons of pink Himalayan sea salt, three teaspoons of black pepper, six teaspoons of onion powder, six teaspoons of garlic powder, six teaspoons of paprika, three teaspoons of thyme, three teaspoons of sage, three teaspoons of crushed red pepper flakes. And you can just add this into your ground beef and it will make it taste just like breakfast sausage. So there's a little hack for you. All right, you guys, and the only other thing that we will need for this breakfast burrito bowl is sour cream here. 
and we like hot sauce. This is my favorite hot sauce, Tapatio. And so I'm going to put this in the pantry section. I'm gonna put this in the fridge with all of the other items that I prepped. And I also went ahead and added to my checkoff list that I told you guys about some metal flippers and a set of metal tongs because the cooktop that we have requires metal cookware. So that is what I'm using. And now we will move on to week two's breakfast. All right, you guys, for the next six breakfasts, I'm going to do keto waffles with bacon and heavy whip and a mixed berry keto syrup. So this is gonna be pretty easy. So I just went ahead and I purchased the keto pancake mix from Costco and on the bag, it says how to not only make the keto pancakes, but how to make keto waffles. And so I went ahead and I put my waffle maker with our camping stuff in the garage. So we don't forget to bring that. And all you need is for three to four, four inch waffles, you need to blend three fourth cups with a half a cup of water and one tablespoon of oil. So I went ahead and I put enough mixture in here for three of us for six days. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this quarter cup measuring cup in the bag. So I can go ahead and measure as I'm making the waffles and that'll just make it super easy. And then I went ahead and I filled up this jar with coconut oil. And now all I have to do is make the syrup, prep the bacon and make the heavy whip. So let's do that now. All right, so to make this keto berry syrup, you're going to want to put nine cups of water in a pot. Now, this is gonna be enough for three of us for six mornings. So this is a bigger recipe, but I will link the exact measurements for like a two cup serving worth. <laughs> if you're not wanting to make a bulk amount of this, if you're just wanting to make a smaller amount, I'll leave the exact measurements down below for you. But for this recipe, we're gonna do nine cups of water. All right, and then you're gonna just want this water to come to a boil. So I just turned the heat on to high. And then once it comes to a boil, for nine cups of water, you're gonna wanna add four pounds of berries. Now, I got this from Costco. This is raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries, which I'm so happy there were no strawberries in here because soft, whole strawberries are kind of gross to me. <laughs> so this is perfect. And I'm gonna add this whole bag to this water once it boils and I'm gonna just let it simmer. And I'm gonna simmer it until it gets to the right thickness. But for now, we're gonna just let the water come to a boil. All right, you guys, so while the water heats up, I'm gonna go ahead and make the heavy whipping cream for our waffles. So I'm just gonna take 16 ounces of heavy whipping cream and whip it up with my hand mixer. And then I'm gonna add some of this keto, this is keto confectioner sugar. And this just helps keep the heavy whip thick. Because if you let your homemade heavy whip sit in the fridge, over time it'll get a little bit liquefied. And so this kind of helps just keep it thick. And so you can just add this to taste like one tablespoon at a time until you like the way that your heavy whip tastes. But I'll add this after I whip up my heavy cream. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, and what I did was I purchased three packages of bacon for six days worth. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put all of this bacon into this gallon size bag. Now, in my camping kitchen, I do have a pair of scissors to be able to cut this with. but I'm also going to put two more gallon size bags in this bag. That way when I go to open up the bacon, because I'm only gonna use a half a package per morning, I could put the rest of the bacon in its own separate gallon size bag and then 
the day before we go to make our breakfast, I can pull one of these out and put that in a separate gallon size bag in my kitchen sink filled up with water to thaw out overnight. So this is just stuff that only takes a few minutes, but just makes it so much easier when you're camping. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put this in the deep freezer with the other meat. And that is something I'm doing as I'm meal prepping. Any meat that I have, I'm gonna just freeze. Anything that I need to freeze, I'm putting downstairs in our garage, in our deep freezer. That way when we go to pack up our cooler, we won't have to pack everything up upstairs and then bring it all the way downstairs. All of our frozen items will already be in the garage. So I can go ahead and load those up and then I can load up my refrigerated items in a separate cooler. All right, you guys, so the water is about to come to a boil. Let's go ahead and add our fruit. So I'm gonna just let this simmer until it gets to the desired thickness. All right, you guys, so it is still heating up. Now, what I'm gonna do while I wait for it to heat, like come to a boil, is I'm gonna take a cup of water out. All right, until you have, like I said, a cup of it. And then I'm gonna add two teaspoons of this into here and whisk it really well. I'm gonna pour my mixture into here. Ooh. Nice. We're gonna mix it really well. All right, now we're gonna wait for this to come to a rapid boil. All right, y'all. Now, please excuse the background noise. My in-laws do live with us and they're playing some music downstairs. <laughs> um, but this is the finished product. So, like I said, as it, soon as it started to boil, I just turned the heat off and this is the yummy deliciousness that you get. This is the perfect syrup consistency. It's gonna be amazing on our waffles. I feel very proud of myself right now. <laughs> so yes, I'm gonna just let this cool completely before I transfer it over to my large mason jar. you guys so this is the large jar that we are taking with us and this will be enough for six waffle breakfast so I'm just waiting until it's completely cool before I put the lid on it and set it in the fridge and then it made an extra two quart size mason jars full And then I'm also bringing this coconut oil spray so I have something to spray my waffle maker with. And then I'm also bringing this maple pecan syrup to put on top of the waffles with my homemade syrup. Now, if you're wondering about coffee, we do have a coffee pot that we're bringing and our friend Ryan always brings the coffee every year so he's got that handled and I'm just bringing this large jar. It says cane sugar, but it's actually filled with stevia and this little tiny spoon. Now, I don't wanna bring my pretty sugar bowl that we use at home for our stevia, so this is just another alternative. If you still want your sugar bowl to look pretty, you could just buy a wood 
mason jar lid <laughs> and i will link these down below for you and then my husband and our friend ryan sometimes they like to put butter in their coffee for like a bulletproof coffee and so i got this really pretty butter dish off of amazon and i was able to fit three sticks of butter in it and i'm going to just seal it it has a seal top lid and i will link this down below for you as well so now all of our breakfasts are done and we're ready to move on to lunches. All right, you guys, so for the guys' lunches, we're gonna just keep it really simple. This is exactly what they wanted when I asked them. So basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna do two sausages each per day and they're gonna just cook their sausages over the fire and they're not gonna use any buns. They're gonna just put ketchup and mustard on top of their hot dogs. And then I had, I already had this huge jar of pickles. And so they can have it with some pickles. And then for their side, I just got three bags of pre-made coleslaw mix. Normally I make my own coleslaw, but some things I did kind of, you know, purchase to make it a bit easier for me since I'm prepping so much food. So I purchased three bags of these for them. And then I purchased this classic mayo from Costco. This is keto mayo and it has really healthy ingredients on it. And so they can just mix that with their coleslaw and they'll be good to go. And if we need to buy more coleslaw mix, if this doesn't last them the full 12 lunches, then there's a store right down the road that we can go to. But this is all the guys lunches and basically all I have to do is the, these items, I don't have to refrigerate yet, so I'm gonna just put this in my pantry section, and then this I'm gonna refrigerate, obviously, and this, and then I'm gonna just put one of the sausage packages into here, and I'm gonna refrigerate this one, and then I'm gonna freeze these three packages. And the reason I'm doing that is because this will be the first package of sausages that they dig into and once they open the bag, they can go ahead and just leave this in the Ziploc bag since the packaging will be open. That way they don't have to worry about, you know, getting sausage juices everywhere in the fridge. It's just in here, neat and tidy, ready to go. And then when they're ready for their next package, they can just put it in here a few days ahead of time and then it'll thaw out in the fridge nicely. And I like to freeze as much stuff as possible because it helps keep the cooler colder for longer. Now I do transfer a lot of my meat into the freezer that we're bringing with us for our, that's connected to our um, mini fridge. So I will go ahead and put these in the freezer and then I'll refrigerate this stuff and put this in the pantry section and the guys lunches are done. So super simple and easy. All right, you guys. So. I'm gonna to explain to you what I'm gonna do for 12 lunches for just myself. Now, one very easy thing you can do is canned soups. So I'm gonna do this our second week. I just got this Wolfgang Puck Organic Classic Minestrone Soup. So I've got six cans, so I'll have one can a day for six days for my lunches. And then if I want to do something else to go along with that, I will do quesadillas. So I have these carb balance tortillas because we're gonna have quesadillas one night with one of our dinners, but I got the family pack. That way if I ever want any with my lunches, I can have them. And then I'll use this Colby Jack cheese for the quesadillas. And then the first week I'm gonna do a charcuterie board for myself for lunches. So basically what I did was I made a homemade strawberry dip And I basically just added a few ingredients to my food processor and it made this strawberry dip. Now I will leave the link for where I got this from down in the description box below for you. But it made a ton of this strawberry dip. And basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my strawberries in it. Now I also got some oranges and apples that I can cut up and add to this charcuterie board tray as well. And then I also made a homemade hummus and I will leave the link for this recipe down below. Now I did kind of change the recipe a little bit, but you could find homemade hummus recipes anywhere online. This is a roasted red and orange pepper hummus that I made. And basically I'm gonna just dip <laughs> 
some cucumber, some carrots that I already sliced up, and some green beans in my hummus. And then I also have these almond flour crackers. We're gonna use these in one of our other meals that I'll show you in a moment. But I bought a big box so that way I can have it with my charcuterie board as well. And I'm gonna use this mozzarella cheese and this goat cheese. And then I just got some hard salami for it as well. So this is what I'm gonna have for six days worth of lunches. And I think this will be enough for me. I mean, if this isn't enough for six days, then I can always just like eat leftovers or I can have a quesadilla or I can just have some cut up fruit because I'm bringing, like I said, a big bag of apples and oranges as well. And sometimes I don't even get hungry for lunch. So that's why I'm not doing a whole lot. But yes, those are all of my lunches. And now we are ready to move on to the dinner portion, which I will do tomorrow. But I do wanna mention as well, we are bringing two cases of sparkling waters and I just have those for if we want that with our lunches or our dinners or whatever. But yes, that is the end of day one meal prep for me. So I'm gonna just put this stuff away, tidy up my kitchen, and I'll see you guys for day two where I work on all of our dinners. <laughs> Hi you guys, so it is the next morning. I have my coffee, I'm ready to go. We are going to prep all of the dinners for two weeks worth of camping and keeping in mind the meals that we're gonna do there at the campground, the, the two fish taco dinners and then eating out a couple of times. So it's not gonna be 12 meals total, but it'll be enough to hopefully give you some great camping meal ideas and kind of show you how to meal prep. But without further ado, let's just get right into today's video. <laughs> you excited to go camping? Mm -hmm. Are you excited? Baby donkey? <laughs> I love you. You're so sweet. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the first meal that we're going to do is keto white chicken chili with keto cornbread. I'm going to make the cornbread here, and that way we can just heat it up in the toaster oven that I'm bringing with us when we're there. So I don't have to worry about cooking anything. That's gonna be the first meal we're doing. So I'm gonna grab my apron and let's get started on the white chicken chili. <laughs> All right, you guys, so for this keto white chicken chili, you're gonna to wanna to add four pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast to your pot. And then you're gonna to wanna to add three cups of chicken broth. And then you're gonna to wanna to add one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. And then you're gonna to wanna to add eight ounces of green chilies. And then you're gonna to wanna to add four tablespoons of heavy cream, or you can use half and half if you don't have heavy cream. And then you're gonna to wanna to add all of your seasonings. For your seasonings, you're gonna need two teaspoons of pink Himalayan sea salt, two teaspoons of cumin powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of black pepper, three teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of dried parsley, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and one teaspoon of oregano. So now you're gonna to wanna to just mix that really well. And I'm gonna just use a spatula to mix it all in. And then you're gonna to wanna to spread two eight ounce blocks worth of cubed cream cheese. So I just cut this into little cubes here. You're gonna to wanna to just spread this all into your chili broth mixture. And then once you have put all of your cream cheese in here, you're going to want to cook this and I will show you what setting I do once I have put all this in here. And this is great because this way when we get to the campsite, I can just reheat it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my lid on. Now, before I put my lid on, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it to the ceiling position. That's what you want it to be on. And then,
Yes, I just lock the lid into place, and then what I do is I press start, and then I do the chicken setting, and then I press start. Now this is not the Instapot, this is the Farberware pressure cooker, but I think it works just as great. I've never had an Instapot, but I'm sure they're pretty comparable. I will link this down below. I got it at Walmart. So yeah, while that cooks, we're gonna go ahead and start on the cornbread. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is set your oven to, I'm gonna do it on convection, or if you don't have a convection oven, you can do bake. Either way, for 350 degrees. Sorry if my oven is a little bit loud. <laughs> um, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is take a half a stick of butter and melt it on medium to high heat setting. All right, and then you're gonna wanna just turn it off because it's pretty much almost all the way melted. So you're gonna turn off your heat. And now we're gonna make our cornbread mixture. All right, so for the cornbread, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make your buttermilk. So for your buttermilk, you're gonna wanna add six tablespoons of heavy whipping cream to a bowl with two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. And then you're gonna wanna just stir it you're gonna to wanna to allow that to sit while you make your other cornbread ingredients. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to get a large bowl and please excuse the background noises. I've got my Instapot making noise and my oven making noise, so <laughs> hopefully you could just ignore that. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to get is three cups of almond flour. Put that in your bowl. And then in this bowl right here, I have a half a teaspoon of baking soda and baking powder. I have four tablespoons of keto-friendly sweetener. I will link it down below for you. And I've got a couple of pinches of pink Himalayan sea salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my cornbread mixture. And then you wanna get just a large fork and combine all of this. And you wanna just do this until there are no lumps at all. And then you wanna go ahead and add six eggs. You're gonna to wanna to add 10 tablespoons of melted butter. And then you wanna add six tablespoons of water. And then you wanna add your buttermilk mixture. And then you wanna add 15 to 30 drops of this cornbread flavoring. I'm not sure if you could see it. I will link this down below. I'm gonna do 20 drops of it. And after 35 minutes, this is what you have. So we're gonna just let that cool completely, and at the end of the day, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into little slices, and then I'll package it for our trip. All right, you guys, so here is the white chicken chili. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand mixer, and I'm going to shred up the chicken using my hand mixer, which is a little hack that I just discovered. It's a bit messy, but totally worth it, so I'm gonna do that now. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix in three cups of riced cauliflower. I just took almost a full head of cauliflower and I put it in my food processor until it made cauliflower rice and now I'm just mixing it in. 
And this way, when we get to the campground, all I have to do is reheat this in a pot. So this meal is done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it cool down completely. I actually need my Instapot for another recipe I'm making, so I'm gonna put this into a pot and I'm gonna let it cool off, and then at the end of the day, I'm going to transfer it to a gallon-sized Ziploc bag and freeze it. And that way, it'll help keep our cooler cold for longer, and then the night before, I can just set it out and let it thaw out, and then we can reheat it. And we'll have this with the cornbread for two dinners. So now we're gonna move on to the keto potato soup without potatoes. <laughs> All right, you guys, so for the no potato keto soup, we are going to do 72 ounces of cauliflower, only because we are doubling this soup recipe. We're gonna have this for two dinners. So I had some, most of this is just chopped up pieces of cauliflower like this, like into chunks, and then I ran out, I used three heads of cauliflower, and then I finished it off with some frozen cauliflower because three heads didn't equal quite the 72 ounce amount that I needed. So I put all the 72 ounces of chopped up cauliflower in my Instapot with 10 cups of water. And now I'm gonna just cook this on the vegetable steam setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and steam this now. All right, you guys, so now that the cauliflower is cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and spoon some of this mixture into my blender. All right, and then I'm going to add one block of cream cheese to my blender. And then I'm gonna add four stalks of celery to my blender. I went ahead and I cut up two third cups of onion and I'm gonna put half of this into the blender. And now I'm gonna just blend this for about two to four minutes. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my seasonings to my soup mixture. So for my seasonings, I am using a half a teaspoon of black pepper, two teaspoons of pink Himalayan sea salt, and four tablespoons of nutritional yeast. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add two thirds cups of sliced carrots. I just went ahead and I peeled these and I sliced these with my food processor. Then I'm gonna add the remainder of the chopped onions and 28 ounces of chicken broth. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add my creamy blender ingredients. All right, now this is going to be enough for two dinners, probably two to three dinners. This is quite a bit and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna serve these with cheese quesadillas, and if you are eating this right away, then what I'm gonna tell you to do is go ahead and simmer this soup mixture on your cooktop for about 15 to 20 minutes, but I'm gonna do that at the campground, and when you do that, it makes your soup thicken. So this is my no potato soup recipe. All right, you guys, for my next dinner, I am doing egg roll in a bowl, and this is gonna be enough for two dinners. Now, basically, all I did was I put 10 cups worth of cabbage in a food processor, and that's about one head of cabbage. And then I went ahead and put it in this gallon-sized Ziploc bag, and I put egg roll in a bowl on here so I know what it's for. And then I put two pounds of ground beef sorry, it's defrosted a bit, in this bag, and this says egg roll in a bowl. So that way I know what meal this is for, and I'll explain how I'm gonna cook all of this in a moment. And then I got two sweet onions, and I diced them up, and I put them in this bag, and then I got one bell pepper, and I sliced it up, and I put it in this bag. And then 
I put my Bragg's amino acids in here. It's about eight tablespoons. Sesame seeds. I'm gonna need a tablespoon of ginger. And then I'm gonna need about 10 cloves of garlic chopped up. All right, so basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some avocado oil in a pan and I'm gonna let it heat up for about five minutes and I'm gonna throw all of my cabbage or half of my cabbage because I'm using this for two meals. So half of my cabbage in the pan and I'm gonna let that cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then while that cooks, I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna have one pound of ground beef per, per meal for three of us. And so I'm gonna fry up the ground beef and then once the cabbage is done cooking, I'm gonna throw the ground beef in there and then I'm gonna fry up half the onions and half the bell peppers, all in avocado oil. And then I'm gonna throw in the garlic at the end. And then once these are all cooked, uh, I fry them for about um, 15 minutes or until they're like that caramelly color, until they've caramelized. <laughs> and then I'm gonna throw it in with the cabbage and the ground beef and then I'm gonna season it with a tablespoon of ground ginger and four tablespoons of Bragg's and then I'm gonna sprinkle sesame seeds on top and I'm also going to dice up some green onions and we could garnish our bowls with those. So I didn't cut these up just because I want to preserve these for as long as possible. And I feel like the moment you cut up fruit, it start, or vegetables even. <laughs> this is a vegetable. <laughs> the moment you start cutting up vegetables, they begin to wilt, I feel like, a lot quicker. So hopefully this will preserve it for a little bit longer. And so I'm gonna just put that in this bag and then What I'm gonna do, I put egg roll in a bowl in this bag, so I'm gonna just add my garlic, my brags, my seasonings, my onions, my bell peppers, my measuring spoon, and my green onions, all in this bag. And this is a bag that I'm going to be refrigerating. Well, actually, I'm not gonna put my green onions in there because they don't fit, so I'll know what they're for, though. All right, so I'm gonna put all of this in the fridge, and then along with the green onions, I'm going to go freeze this meat, and I'm also going to refrigerate the cabbage. That's two meals done. All right, you guys, so this meal is probably gonna be one of the most basic meals as far as prep goes. Now, one of the nights where we're gonna be camping, my husband and our friend Ryan are gonna cook dinner for me, and so I'm not even prepping any of this stuff. I'm gonna let them do that, but basically what they're gonna do are fajitas, and so we are using this deer tenderloin. We're using a little over two pounds of it, and this is what they're gonna use for the fajita meat, and then I went ahead and I got this taco seasoning for them, and so we'll bring that. And my husband asked for bell peppers and onions. Now, I ran out of bell peppers from all of the food that I purchased, so I wrote it down on my kitchen tools list. Let me show you this checkoff list that I told you about that I've been making. I have all of my kitchen tools that I've been writing down that I need for each meal, and then I have food items that I need just so I don't forget them. And then I have a section for things we need to buy, which I thought I got everything when I went to the grocery store, but we are gonna have to make a quick store run. We'll probably do that. We're leaving on Monday, so we'll probably do that Sunday after church. But basically, we're gonna get a few more onions and a few more bell peppers for the fajitas, as well as some avocados. We need about three avocados, but everything else we have. So basically, they're gonna do the fajitas with the taco seasoning. I got him two packages of mushrooms. They're gonna do mushrooms, the bell peppers and the onions, and the tomatoes, and then I have those two heads of cilantro that I'm bringing, so we can use that with the fajitas, and we also have sour cream and we also have the salsa verde for that I purchased for the breakfast but I got two jars of it so I know that we'll have extra leftover for that so this is one whole meal so I'm basically going to just put this in the fridge with my refrigerated items I'm going to put this in my pantry section I'm going to go put this in the deep freezer so 
that meal is done and then we have our one dinner that we're gonna eat out we have two fish dinners so let me show you what kind of sides I'm gonna bring in case we do a fish dinner all right so this is a super simple super easy meal prep right here now hopefully the guys catch some fish and if they do that we'll have it for two dinners and so basically what we'll do is we'll just fry the fish and then I'll use this lettuce mix which I'm not gonna touch it I'm gonna put it straight in the fridge when we get to the campground and then when I go to make the salad I'll wash it and everything just to make sure it doesn't wilt at all I'm not gonna wash it ahead of time so I'll use half of this salad mix and I'll use some avocado oil and some apple cider vinegar to make the dressing and I'll put a little bit of salt on it and then I will sprinkle it with some cheese and that's just a super simple super basic salad and then for our sides for one of the dinners we could do fried green beans which are already frozen and then for a separate dinner we can have the other half of the salad with these Brussels sprouts. And we also have those taco shells. And I bought three bags of cheese total. I know I've already shown you the cheese, one bag of cheese, but I have two extra bags of cheese for if we do like fish tacos, because we also have the taco shells. And then I'm also going to use those for the fajitas. I didn't show you that, I forgot about that. We have the extra cheese for that as well. So, so basically, so far we have two keto white chicken chili dinners with cornbread we have two no potato soups <laughs> for two dinners with quesadillas we have two dinners worth of egg roll in a bowl we have one dinner out we have two fish dinners we have one fajita night and then i'm going to show you the last two meals that we're doing all right you guys so for our last two dinners we're going to do burgers now i do have these brioche buns but I'll probably be the only one using those because the guys are on keto but if they decide that they do want a bun it's there so I got this Wagyu ground beef so we'll do two pounds per dinner for three of us and then if the guys want instead of the buns they can put their burgers between these lettuce pieces and then I made this jalapeno cream cheese mixture for them to spread on their burger and basically all I did was I got two blocks of cream cheese and I whipped it up in a bowl and then I threw in some sliced jalapeno slices you can do it to taste and then I with my handheld mixer I mixed all of that together and so they could spread this on their burgers and then I had this bacon in the freezer that we need to eat and so I'm going to bring this with us that we could fry up so they could do bacon jalapeno cream cheese burgers and what we're gonna do for our sides is we're gonna grill some squash and some zucchini and I wrote that to my grocery list because I totally forgot to get sides for this dinner so yes but this is the last and final dinner and then one thing we might do if they don't end up catching any fish is we'll probably just get a couple of steaks at the store near the campground while we're there and do steaks one night for dinner with just some like super simple sides that we can just pick up at the grocery store. But yes, those are all of the dinners I'm making for camping. All right, you guys, so I went ahead and I bagged up the white chicken chili as well as the no potato soup and the cornbread. I put the cornbread in two separate bags as well as the dinners in two separate bags because they are for two dinners and two dinners and then this goes with this. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the chili and the soup down to the deep freezer and I'm gonna let them freeze. So yeah, these are done and I'm also going to bring some xanthan gum for this no potato soup just in case it doesn't thicken up once it starts cooking. I can add that to it as like a natural thickener. All right, you guys, so basically the last thing that I have to do before I clean up this mess of a kitchen <laughs> is bake these drumsticks. Now, basically all I did was I put some avocado oil on the bottom of the pan and then I seasoned the bottom half of the drumsticks with paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, and pepper. And then I did the top sides with the same thing and then I drizzled some olive oil on top and I'm gonna bake this uncovered for about 40 minutes and so while this is baking I'm going to clean up my kitchen but what I'm going to do with this is once it's out of the oven 
I'm going to go ahead and take all of the meat and the skin off of the bones. I'm going to throw it in my food processor and I'm going to make a chicken salad out of it. And, and we're going to have this for our dinner on Monday. So we're leaving Monday morning to get to the campground. We're going to be setting up our site all day long. So by the time dinner rolls around, I'm going to be way too tired to cook. So I always like to bring a chicken salad and we're going to just eat it with some crackers and that'll be our dinner for the night. So yeah, I'm going to pop this in the oven and then you all can just hang out with me and watch me clean up my kitchen because that's always fun. Alright you guys, so here are the drumsticks. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear the meat and the skin off of the bone and I'm going to throw it in my food processor and then we're going to get started on this homemade chicken salad. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna just package these up and we will just put this in a small cooler bag so that way it's easily accessible once we get to the campground. And we are going to have these with some keto crackers. So now all I have to do, we have a little extra just in case the boys are still hungry. So now all I have to do is clean up this kitchen. I can't believe I finished. 